Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are joined by Prabir Purkayasta to discuss the recent announcement made by Iran that said that the country has now increased uh, the amount of uranium, low enriched uranium possessed by the country has now surpassed the limits which was set in the Iran nuclear deal. So, uh, firstly, Prabir, if we look at the more nitty gritties of the of the deal, the more details into the details of this deal, is this really true? Because uh, what is being shown in the mainstream media right now is that the is that Iran has violated the deal. But is this true? Well, let's put it this way: violation of a deal can take place if there is a deal. The JCPOA, the basic agreement we are talking about, mm. basically was between the United States and Iran, and it had another five countries in it. The essentially. P5 is the on one, one side, including the United States plus Germany. And then, of course, the other party was Iran. But all of this was really an agreement between the United States and Iran. And the other countries, the five countries, which is the six countries of the on one side, they were there to essentially guarantee that both sides behaved, as it were. And they, therefore, also are a part of the agreement that in case anything happens, they will also to have to take responsibilities. The United States has walked out of the agreement. Having walked out of the agreement, it says Iran must still be, still be held to the agreement. Now, this means what we would call in conventional childhood uh, playground style, uh, head I win, tell you lose. So this seems to be the argument which is being given. The second part, to answer your question about what is the agreement, that agreement also provides that if one side religious on a part of the agreement, and Iran made very clear that if the United States religious on certain parts of the agreement, that these are the steps they'll be forced to take. So this is one part of it, that this is not in that sense a violation of agreement, because this is also built into the clauses of the agreement, what, the, what Iran would do if the US does something. Okay. The last part of this, and I think this is very, very important for us to understand, that the United States has sanctioned Iran from exporting enriched uranium and heavy water. Now, they, what they have been doing is, while they keep the centrifuges running, before they hit the 300 kg limit set by the JCPOA agreement, the Iran agreement, they would export these additional amounts and send it to Russia and the heavy water I believe they were sending to Oman, where the Oman was holding an inventory of heavy water. Now, after you have forbidden them to export, you have put that under sanctions, what is it that you are asking Iran to do? Essentially stopping its enrichment program. Iran from the beginning, in fact this is the board of contention right through the Iran and US standoff, that we have a right under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty for pursuing the peaceful uh, uses of nuclear energy. And therefore, we have a right to enrich uranium for the purpose of various things, including uh, setting up power reactors, but also for essentially what are called medical isotopes, uh, various other uses of uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, products of uh, uranium. So all of this, this is a right that the Iran was exercising right from the beginning. And this right is the, what the United States wants to take away. Hmm. The US is very clear in what it is saying. It is saying that Iran must submit in total, must give up any possibility of dealing with the enrichment of uranium. It must deal with, not deal with anything to do with nuclear, uh, shall we say, uh, technologies which include a whole bunch of other things, yeah. not just, uh, shall we say, uh, power or bombs, but also a whole bunch of other things, including, as I said, medicinal use, then it must not have any rocket technology, that it must not be able to have any missiles. And at the last point that it is making, these are statements both Trump and Pompeo have made, that they should not also interfere in the region, which means they should play no diplomatic role or a military role in the region. That means Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Israel, of course, will, with conjunction with the NATO powers, of course, United States being the key one, should be allowed a free hand in the region to destroy countries, Libya, 
Syria, Iraq being three of the examples. And Iran should not play any role resisting any of this. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it is an argument you disarm and then we let you live. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, if you disarm, whether you'll be allowed to live or you'll be invaded and occupied, nobody knows. And effectively, at any point of time, Iran to be thrown at the mercies of Israel, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, under the aegis of the United States is not an option that Iran can exercise at any moment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is therefore to me, as I said, the childhood bully example comes to mind that you have to surrender or else. And if you surrender, then of course I can beat you every day, morning and evening. And we know what uh, Israel is doing in Gaza. Yeah. So they fire bombs and uh, if uh, the Palestinians living there retaliate any form, even protest on the borders peacefully, they are shot and bombed. So this is the peace that Israel wants to impose on West Asia in large. This is the peace that Saudi Arabia at the moment is imposing on Yemen, yeah. unsuccessfully, hopefully. So this is the peace that United States, the NATO allies, and the, uh, shall we say, Israel and its allies in the region want to impose on Iran. And this obviously is not acceptable to any country. How will I, why should a country surrender after having already negotiated one peace, in which they gave up a lot? Yeah. You know, 98% of the uh, uh, low enriched uranium, which they had as a stockpile, they exported out. Out of 16,000 uh, centrifuges, they brought the number of centrifuges down to 5,000, you know, or I think 6,000, out of which 5,000 were operational. So they took huge hits to their uh, nuclear enrichment program in order to have peace. And at that time, we said, well, you know, this is at least a possibility of peace. And after Trump walked out, we've been waiting to see how far the United States wants to take it to war. Prabhi, can you also talk about more about the role of the other countries in the deal? You mentioned before that, of course, U.S. is not the only country. There are five European countries as well, which are part of the deal. Have they really played their role properly in terms of, you know, over uh, monitoring the behavior of the two countries and what the U.S. is currently doing? Yeah. Let's put it this way. There are four European countries plus China. So that makes it five. And three of them are what would be called, called European Union countries. Mm -hmm. Not so great Britain, uh, United Kingdom, uh, France, and uh, Germany. These are the three European countries which are a part of the deal. Now, one of the things that was originally created, that sanctions mean that you, then Iran cannot do a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. So Trump's withdrawal meant sanction on Iran. Essentially sanctions on their oil export, which is one of their major exports. Once you start sanctioning oil, then obviously Iran is going to be hit in its economic activities because it can't import a whole lot of things which it was paying through sale of oil. Now, the three countries uh, which, I think four countries which are main consumers of oil, one is Japan, India, China, and Turkey. These are the four countries which are major consumers of uh, Iran's oil. So they are at the moment finding it difficult because the threats of US sanctions that any Iran oil that you buy, it not only is the country itself comes under certain scrutiny or sanctions, but any company that is involved. It could be the tanker, it could be the insurance company, it could be the bank through which the transaction uh, is taking place, it could be any of their affiliates. So the sort of net for sanctions spreads far and wide. And therefore, most companies do not want to take the risk. So Iran not only is not able to sell its oil, but is also not able to sell other goods or uh, buy other goods because Companies which had already reached an agreement with them from Europe are not willing to do any business with Iran because of the fear of sanctions. Mm. They will be individually sanctioned. And the European countries have failed to put any instrument in place. They have created a non-dollar based uh, exchange of currency. Mm. That currency, uh, I mean, uh, agreements or export imports between two countries could be settled directly and not to the SWIFT system, which the United States today controls. Mm -hmm. 
and it did not if any dollar uh, denomination takes place again the united states by its own laws comes into the picture so they have been trying to do non dollar denominated uh, exchange transactions but the transaction system has not worked mm -hmm. because there hardly any transactions taking place so it seems it is something for show that they have done something but it has not achieved anything so this is what iran is reacting to that if you claim we should remain in the jcpoa yes. if you claim you have a stake in it and you also want to be a partner in the jcpoa minus the united states what are you doing with respect to the sanctions mm -hmm. are you willing to take our oil are you willing to take our other goods are you willing to sell our other goods if we are not then saying you have a payment mechanism which you have set up which is not doing anything is not helping so they have waited almost now uh, more than 6 uh, to 8 months for the european union to react to this and i think they have put the Euro european union under notice much earlier that if you don't intervene to settle this issue then we would have to take steps so their steps is of course within the jcpoa still yeah. while trump's actions are not united states actions are not but the pressure is now on the european union are you willing to put money where your mouth is mm -hmm. or are you going to say being very sanctimonious that you guys have to observe the deal but we really helpless we can't do anything so it becomes an unilateral Uh, shall we say uh, responsibility of iran not to do anything to upset quote and quote the jcpoa limits while the united states is free to sanction them any way they want and is, uh, they can pull out of the deal without any consequences for themselves while iran has all the consequences of supposedly violating the deal which as we have explained is not true but i think the really the issue is it's not only the european union but it is also china russia india turkey japan which have to decide whether this 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 kind of unilateralism of the united states in which they actually have international agreements and walk out of it what is the responsibility of the rest of the world for that of course european union uh, countries these three countries of the european union who have been the signatories to jcpoa have really much more responsibility mm -hmm. but the larger international question remains how do we address a rogue Uh, shall we say superpower which is what united states is and wants to impose its rules on others but it makes up those rules as it goes along yeah. so uh, thank you for me for joining us today and uh, that's all the time we have for today keep watching news clock